Corpse Preparation was one of the first mods I ever tried for Skyrim. It's very lore friendly and it's got a very involved crafting system. It's one of the few necromancy mods I know of that allow you to summon more than just skeletons. This one even lets you summon wraiths. Unfortunately it's only available for normal Skyrim, not the special edition. It has some serious problems though which is why I dropped it years ago and haven't really touched it since, but the concept is really cool. Underneath the College of Winterhold, deep within the Midden, you'll find a necromancy chamber. Inside the chamber you'll find a book called The Fundamentals of Necromancy. It's important that you read every page of this book carefully, because without the knowledge inside, you won't know how to craft any undead. But you don't have to read the book, because I'm about to summarise it for you in this video. Reading the book, you'll learn that you can craft four different kinds of undead. The skeleton, the zombie, the wraith, and the thrall. The skeleton is the first minion you're able to create as a beginner necromancer. The skeleton will not wear any armor or use any magic, but it will fight using whatever melee or ranged weapons you give it. They're capable of following simple orders like wait and follow, and they're also capable of carrying an unlimited amount of stuff. To make your first skeleton you'll need to go find a human corpse and activate it in sneak mode. Before you activate it, you can optionally use the Stat Inspector power to check the corpse's properties. The book states that powerful warriors will carry their abilities over to the skeleton, so a strong warrior will make a good skeleton warrior, and a weak mage will make a lousy skeleton. Skeletons can't use magic, so try to go for warrior corpses instead. You'll have to strip the corpse of all its flesh, which will take 12 in-game hours. For your trouble, you'll get a human heart and a bunch of human flesh as a reward, which you can use for alchemy. Now that you've got the skeleton, you have to bring it back to the altar. To bring it back, you've got to pick it up. Doing so will over-encumber you. 50 points for a skeleton, and 180 points for a fleshy corpse. You can only carry one corpse at a time. This sounds pretty annoying, huh? I'll provide my opinion on that later. Once the skeleton is on the altar, you can choose to repair it using metal scrap, which is a new item that you can purchase from merchants or craft yourself if you have the steel smithing perk. The other requirement is standard leather strips. This will make your skeleton stronger once reanimated. To reanimate the skeleton, you have to make sure that you have the following ingredients in your inventory. Three piles of bone meal, three nightshade flowers, and a pile of void salts. Bone meal is easy to get in this mod. Strip a corpse of its flesh, then grind the remaining skeleton. Void salts is the hard part, and very expensive. When the skeleton dies, it's usually too damaged to be taken back to the altar and repaired. However, if you reinforce the skeleton with leather, then apparently there's a chance of being able to recover it. I've never been able to recover a skeleton though. Before you can move on to zombies, you'll have to make a few skeletons to raise your necromancy level. The necromancy level is a separate stat tracked by the mod. It took me about four skeletons before I could make zombies. You can view your necromancy level in the MCM menu if you have Sky UI, as well as tweak a few other options as well. Zombies are the next minion you can craft. The only equipment they can use are amulets and rings, and they attack by hitting the enemy and transferring disease to them. Because of their ability to wear amulets and rings, you could theoretically give them some very good resistances or bonuses. I haven't experimented with any of this though. When you create the zombie, you get to choose what disease they have, but at the beginning you can only choose brown rot. Brown rot drains the victim's strength and personality. The disease can also transfer to you whenever you're too close to the victim that the zombie is attacking, and also when you talk to your zombie minion. If you talk to the zombie minion, you'll find it's capable of carrying items and also following simple orders. Later on, you can imbue zombie minions with strong diseases like astral vapors, which stunts magicka regeneration, and reduces magicka resistance, or cobby wobbles, which weakens the victim's strength, endurance, and mobility. Zombies have more health than skeletons, and can be carried back to the altar and repaired after they've died. But from what I've seen of them, the damage output is lackluster. A well-equipped skeleton will deal more damage than a zombie. To create a zombie, you'll have to carry a corpse to the altar and repair it. The corpse is going to weigh you down by 180 pounds or kilos or whatever, so it's really annoying to bring it back there. To repair it, it will cost you four leather strips, some catgut, and some metal scraps. 
The metal scraps and leather strips can be crafted, but I couldn't find any way to get a hold of catgut. Maybe you get it from killing and stripping dead Khajiits, but I couldn't find any Khajiits to test this theory on. The mod page will tell you that general merchants have a 25% chance of selling catgut to you. But once you've begun dabbling in necromancy, everyone except the mages of Winterhold and a few weird individuals will ignore you and shout, get away from me. So even if the merchant you're talking to has the cat gut, you wouldn't be able to purchase it. It's actually impossible to get a hold of it. So I ended up getting pretty frustrated, and in the end I just used the console to get the item code for cat gut and spawned it in myself. Anyway, once you've got the leather strips, cat gut, and scrap metal, you can repair the corpse. It will then be ready to be turned into a zombie. A zombie requires two Namira's rot mushrooms, three nightshade flowers, and a pile of void salts. The next minion you can get is the Wraith. Wraiths are ethereal, so they take no damage from normal weaponry, and they throw ice shards at enemies. They can't be used to carry anything, and cannot be commanded. The only option you have when you talk to them is them begging for you to release them. If you choose to release them, then they will be destroyed. To make a Wraith, you need to reach Expert Necromancy level, which takes a lot of zombie and skeleton crafting to reach. Then you have to bring a skeleton to the altar to turn it into a Wraith. This requires three Nightshade Flowers, five piles of Clue Dust, and three piles of Void Salts. When the Wraith is crafted, you receive its skull. The skull is what binds it into the world, and when the wraith dies, the skull will disappear. The final minion you get is the Thrall. The Thrall is the same as the reanimated minion you get normally in Skyrim, except that it's permanent. To make a Thrall, a corpse must be brought to the altar and repaired, as if you were going to make a zombie. The requirements for this minion are 5 nightshade flowers, 2 piles of glow dust, and 1 pile of vampire dust. The book also recommends that the Frau is embalmed. This will allow you to take it back to the altar and reanimate it again if it dies. It also makes it tougher. The embalming process requires a corpse to be left in the salt bath for 30 in-game days, and then wrapped in linen cloth, the kind of cloth you find lying around in Draugr ruins. The book goes on to tell you how you can create black soul gems from greater soul gems, and how these can be offered to the ideal masters whoever they are, in exchange for a blessing or an affliction. You do this by interacting with the Font of Souls. There's a few problems with this mod, and you may have already been able to guess some of them, but a glaring problem is the summon limit. You can only have a trio of minions at any given time, so your hopes of a big army are completely dashed with this mod. By far the biggest problem is the incredible effort that goes into making a pretty crappy minion. Let's go over it real quick. To create a skeleton, the weakest of the minions, not only do you have to haul the corpse off to a faraway altar and suffer a very long walk while being encumbered, you must also expend very precious items to create it. Void salts are one of the rarest ingredients in the game, and at least 400 bucks or something like that to purchase. Then when you finally get the skeleton, you're going to require more than one minion, so you're going to have to repeat this long walk several times which is going to be in different dungeons or forts than whatever the one you got the first corpse from is, because the corpses are going to expire once you leave the area. It will also cost you a lot of money buying void salts or whatever else, or going to strange locations like graveyards to gather the nightshade, and the end result is a bunch of pretty lousy minions. This is all assuming you've also reinforced the minions, which costs extra money, time and effort and reinforcing them really doesn't make them that much stronger from what I can tell. The skeletons are pretty lousy, they die quite easily, they're not worth the asking price at all. The same can be said for all the other minions, but zombies are even more expensive and arguably worse in combat than skeletons are. This is simply because a zombie is always just hitting with his fists, whereas you could conceivably give a skeleton a very good weapon to fight with. Wraiths are probably the most decent minion you can get, Decent in the way that they're capable of actually killing stuff without dying immediately to anything stronger than a wolf or a bandit. But they're still pretty lousy, and they'll die long before they've paid off their incredibly expensive crafting price. I mean, come on. Several void salts? Five glow dust? Holy cow, they cost a fortune. And you can't even buy them from merchants because everybody hates you and won't talk to you. Do you know how long it takes to gather five glow dust? 
I think you've got to go and kill those uh, wisp mothers and stuff. And how are you going to do that without any minions? You're certainly not going to do it with this little starty skeletons that are completely crap. You can take the altar, salt bath, etc. out of Winterhold and bring them to your house or whatever. That still means a long walk. Because whenever you need a minion, or whenever your minion dies, you're going to have to pick it up and carry it back to your house or whatever, repair it, and then get back out into the field. So unless your idea of fun is a long walk while being over encumbered between wherever you are now and an altar, and on top of that spending very expensive ingredients to make very bad minions, then you're probably not going to be having much fun in this mod, as I did not. One of the nice things about this mod is the way debuffs get applied to you because of your necromancy. Whenever you perform necromancy rituals and stuff, you accumulate corruption. Even with just a tiny bit of corruption, nobody will talk to you. They just say, get away from me, and stuff like that. Which means you can't buy the stuff you need from your minions like void salts or catgut. You also can't complete quests, you can't sell loot, you can't do anything except being a weirdo hanging out in Winterhold's college. As you build more undead, your corruption raises and your speech craft is lowered to zero. You become extremely vulnerable to disease and you lose the well-rested bonus from sleeping because of nightmares, which is pretty cool to read about actually. Whenever you wake up from sleeping, spooky music plays and you get to read a little blurb about whatever nightmare you had. The list of negative effects increases to the point where health no longer regenerates and some other bad stuff happens as well. At first I was really enjoying these debuffs and corruption because you know I love a squishy caster and stuff. But damn, it would have been fine if all the ingredients needed to make a minion could be crafted somehow. But how it is now, it means you simply can't make any more minions, because the only way to get cat gut, aside from summoning it in through the terminal, is to go and talk to a merchant and buy it. But you can't do that because everybody hates you and won't talk to you. So for most of the footage you're seeing in this game, I've had to cheat and get the ingredients from the terminal in order to make the minions. It would have been impossible otherwise. I don't really understand how the mod author expected people to be able to reasonably create minions with this mod. The only good news about the minions really is that they're permanent. But the permanency isn't going to help you much because they die so easily. Even the more expensive minions like Wraiths and Thralls go down so easily. The only real reason to play this mod is for its very lore friendly and interesting crafting. A lot of work has been put into making the necromancy work according to how the law books describe it. So kudos to the mod creator for following the game law so closely. The mod also gets it wrong though, because while it follows the books very accurately for many things, it also adds in a bunch of needless extra ingredients which make the mod frustrating. According to the corpse preparation volumes, the strengthening of skeletons using leather bindings is supported. So is repairing zombies using catgut. What's not supported is the requirement for nightshade, void salts, glow dust, or any of these other things. As far as I can tell, these have just been added by the modder to make things more difficult, and far too difficult in fact. The only book that mentions anything about nightshade is the practical necromancy book from Elder Scrolls Online, which says it's involved in summoning a shade. You require nightshade that's being crushed in an ebony mortar and pestle, but it's not relevant here though. We're not summoning shades. The corruption mechanic is supported by the Black Art Sun Trial book, which is a pretty interesting read. In it you'll see the arguments put forth by various mages for and against the banning of necromancy from the Mages Guild. One of the arguments put forward by Master Carolus is that dabbling in necromancy will cause corruption to the soul, whatever that means. The modder took it to mean these debuffs, which I find pretty fair. So although the modder has done so well in making the crafting interesting and pretty lore friendly, They've also ruined it with all these extra requirements and by making it too difficult and too expensive. As such, I give this mod a 5 out of 10. I hate to score this mod so harshly considering all the love that seems to have been put into it. I think if any of you try this mod, you'll agree that the bad outweighs the good. These few minions you're able to craft are not an army. Carrying corpses one by one to a distant altar, expending very expensive and rare ingredients that you can't even acquire, you saw all the NPCs hating you and ignoring you, only to make a minion that's very, very weak. It's just not fun. It's not good enough. The minions don't seem to scale with your necromancy level or your conjuration level. Reinforced skeletons created by a master at necromancy with a pretty decent conjuration level about 80 can't even scratch the paint off the shield of a white run guard. 
A few of the best zombies you can create don't fare any better. Ghosts will eventually kill the guards, tickling them to death with ice shards, and they only survive because of their immunity to normal weaponry. Against any kind of magic user or someone with enchanted weaponry, they drop like flies. A thrall you've left in a salt bath for 30 days is also not great. All the minions in this mod are simply disappointing. It could be fixed up with a few changes. The first thing I'd do is remove the minion limit, although this is honestly the least of the mod's problems. I'd remove the need for the expensive ingredients. It simply can't be that the skeleton is so expensive when it's this weak. The minions need a serious power boost, especially the zombie. Allow the minions to be repaired in the field and allow the carrying of multiple corpses at once. Or remove the need for an altar and let you summon minions in the field, because carrying these corpses really isn't that fun anyway. Especially since you have to do it one by one. And you have to do it while over encumbered, meaning you can't take any loot with you. So there's my opinions on the corpse preparation true necromancy mod for Skyrim. It's a great concept, but the execution is definitely flawed. It needs revision. It could be fixed up into a great mod, but as it stands now, it's just not worth playing, unfortunately.